Okay, so as promised, here's our latest formula, the fast fitness tips calculation of the amount of air or the volume in the bike tire. That's quite useful because you can then play around with the temperature adjustment, you can look at the effect of rider weight on compression, you can look at a variety of things. You can look at how much um, air do you need to pump up the tire, how much of the CO2 canister do you need to use to inflate the tire, and I put it to you, this is probably the most accurate of tire volume calculators you can get. Now to make this accurate, if we, if we draw back to the most simple calculation, think of the tire as a really long cylinder around the rim, then the, area, the, volume of that cylinder, then the volume of that cylinder is simply the cross section, which is obviously pi r squared, times by the length of the cylinder, or the height. But the height is actually the circumference of the wheel, isn't it? So it's actually pi times d, pi times that diameter, or pi times 2 times the radius. So if you put all that together, you get a simple formula, which is pi r squared, times 2r times pi. So that would be the most simple calculation for the volume of that bicycle tire. There are some slight adjustments, however, because the measured width is the outside of the tire. You really want the inner tube volume. Obviously, it's closely related to that. Secondly, the tire doesn't necessarily just form a complete circle on the inside of the tube. So on the tubular tire, it falls down into the cavity formed by the rim. So an additional correction is needed. That's why you need to tell me the type of bike tire on the top of this calculator. And there's one more consideration, which is the inner tube sits up um, slightly beyond the rim, meaning that it's not just at the end of that measured inner diameter of the rim, i.e. for 700C rim than the 622 millimeters. It's actually about 10% larger than that in terms of the circumference. But all these are details that you don't need to worry about because the calculator works that out precisely for you. Once you've done that, you can do some clever things. You'll see there that you can put in the ambient temperature and then the operating temperature, meaning that the volume calculator will work out exactly what temperature adjustment is necessary when you're putting air in your tire. Now, I did do this the long way initially to check using the ideal gas law which is that formula you remember from physics or chemistry, P times V equals NRT. P being pressure in atmospheres, v being, v being volume, usually in liters, and N being the number of moles of air in this case, and R being the ideal ca gas constant, 8.314, and T being temperature in Kelvin. Uh, that's basically the long way to do it. There's a much easier way, which is to hold everything constant apart from temperature and pressure, and that's the classic Joseph Gay-Lussac adjustment or Gay-Lussac formula and Gay-Lussac adjustment is essentially the current temperature T2 over the over the starting temperature T1 times by the starting pressure P1 that will give you the operating pressure i.e. P2 i.e. the pressure now that you're using when the temperature has gone up or down in the atmosphere. Anyway it's in the calculator so you don't need to worry about that. So I'm going to briefly talk you through the spreadsheet here. This is the Fast Fitness Tips Tire Volume and Temperature Adjustment Calculator. You can see there's uh, approximately 11 sections on here. It looks a little bit complicated when you first see it, but it's actually very, very simple. In the first box, which is cell D9, you should type in your tire type using the code 1 for tubular, 2 for clincher, 3 for tubeless. If you just type in the number, it will automatically recognize your tire type. So once you type in the correct tire type, that's your tire, enter the tire width. Ideally, that should be the measured width across the tire, for example, using calipers. You've got millimeters and inches represented here. Um, yes, you can look on the side wall and just be prepared for some inaccuracy there. So I advise you to measure it with a ruler or calipers to get that exact correct width. Next in uh, section C, what I want you to do is to look at your rim width, for example, 17C, 19C, or larger, you know, whatever it is, you can type it in here. That's actually the millimeters across the actual rim bead width, as it's called, the inner diameter, if you like. Now, if you're not sure, if you enter your tire, for example, 25, using a quick calculation, it will tell you what the most typical or recommended rim bead width is in cell um, I-15. And that's actually from tab two down at the bottom here the tire rim matrix, which is uh, produced by Schwalbe. It's freely available online. There's the link. Um, but we just quickly coded this so that it gives you your recommended tire rim width. So it's actually 15C for 25 millimeter tire. Let's check that on here. For example, um, there's your 25 and there's your, in the middle, you could have 13, 15, 17, but typically the middle would be uh, 15C, 15 millimeter. 
Okay, let's change that 28. And you notice that the recommended goes up to 16C. But you can overrule it here. You can put in your actual rim width. Oh, I'm not using a 16C, I'm using 17C, for example. So that's fine. Then enter your wheel diameter. That's basically your wheel size. And at the bottom here in section J, there's a little chart, you know, 17C, 29er, that's a 20, 622. 650C, that's 571. 26 classic mountain bike, that's 559. Now you can measure it with a tape measure if you want to get your exact measurement. You can put your exact measurement in here, for example. But if you want, look at the chart below and enter the um, nearest recommended. So on the basis of your tire width and then your rim width and then the, and then the wheel diameter, there you have the actual volume. Now the calculation is different for each tire type. And if you look at the um, figure down here at the bottom, you can see why the figure is different. For the tubular tire, the air doesn't really go down into the rim. It stays as a kind of, you know, classic cylinder shape. But for the tubeless and the clincher tire, the modeling of the tire size is actually quite a lot more complicated. So even if everything stayed the same and you change from tubular, um, which will give you a tire volume of 1283 at 28 millimeters on a classic 700C um, wheel, you change to clincher, that would actually go up to 1642 approximately. So just as an example, 1642 is 91%, 92% larger than a classic 23 millimeter tubular tire. And if you had a gas canister, let's say 16 uh, CO2 inflation can canister, that would inflate your tire if it was a 28 millimeter to um, 71.9 PSI. So interestingly, you would actually need 104%, i.e. bigger than a 16C gas canister. You need something like a 24 to take you up to the recommended pressure. And if you had a 24, then you'd need 69% of the canister to take you up to your recommended pressure. So what is the recommended pressure? The recommended pressure is obviously on the first spreadsheet that was released by Fast Fitness Tips a week or two ago. But you can type in your recommended pressure here. Let's say you want to get to 80 PSI, then you'd need 74% of a 24 gram uh, CO2 canister. Now, what about temperature adjustment? Well, this is also interesting. Let's say you were to pump your tire up on a cold shed, for example, 15 degrees C, 59 degrees Fahrenheit, but then outside you went into an operating temperature of 25. If you pumped your tire up at 80 PSI, the tire would actually go up to 82.8 when you're operating it. So you actually have to make an adjustment to pump it up at 77.3. Now, this calculation is done for you and you can do any temperature, including a negative direction. So let's say you were pumping it up indoors in a hot room, 25 degrees C, 77 Fahrenheit, but then you went out to a cold day, 5 degrees C, 41 Fahrenheit. Um, it tells you that you'd actually need to inflate the tire at 86 PSI in order for it to be 80 PSI in operating conditions. Or let's say you want it to be 90 PSI, then you'd have to pump it up to 96. So all these calculations are done for you. And these calculations are all done behind the scenes in uh, column F. I've purposely hidden that so that you don't make any accidental adjustment to it. It's nothing hidden as such. It's uh, just a formula that's been worked out here. It's that classic ideal gas law that enables these equations to be done. So there you have it, guys. That's my Fast Fitness Tips volume calculator. I hope that's useful. Let me know if you want any future calculators. I mean, I'm thinking of one right now, thanks to the comments already posted, on the exact rate of deflation based on butyl or in particular latex tubes because um, that's actually mathematically not hard to model and it might be quite useful to put that into a calculator. Okay guys, have a good ride. Take care.